We at DARPA have always been big fans of light. Whether we're talking about light in the visible realm, where it's critical for imaging systems, or in the infrared for night vision, or maybe optical communications or LIDAR, light is the, one of the most important and versatile phenomena that DARPA program managers can leverage when they're trying to develop new technologies for national security. The United Nations actually declared 2015 to be the International Year of Light and Light-Based Technologies. So as the International Year of Light approaches its end, DARPA would like to briefly highlight five programs, each of which in its own way has been taking light to extremes as a means of exploring new technological frontiers and creating new breakthroughs. So one of the programs at DARPA that I'm working on is called PULSE. PULSE stands for Program in Ultrafast Laser Science and Engineering. It is truly a revolutionary program. I think one of the most important applications that I, that I envision uh, at the end of the PULSE program would be uh, an X-ray microscope, uh, similar to electron microscopes, uh, which we utilize these days to look at uh, you know, how the small features at the biological scale work uh, in human and other uh, biological cells, uh, we would be able to create an optical version of that that would not only allow us to look small nanometer scale features, but also do it in a way uh, that allows us to look at things under surfaces. So it's truly like X-ray vision, like Superman had in those movies. At DARPA, I manage a program called NeuroFast. That stands for Neurofunction, Activity, Structure, and Technology. And the vision of the program is to use light and optical interfaces in order to visualize the millions and millions of neurons that are involved in very complex kinds of behaviors. And if we think about the history of neuroscience, we have traditionally used electrical or magnetic kind of signals from the brain in order to try to understand what the brain is ultimately doing. But today, all of that changes through the use of optical kinds of techniques and light-based techniques for which we can visualize three-dimensional volumes of neural circuits. We can understand where all of the individual neurons are positioned, we know what they are connected to, and we know how their activity evolves and ex is expressed over time. So we see light as an enabling technology to, to view the brain in an entirely different way that has ever been uh, achieved in the past. I recently established a program called Reveal, which is revolutionary enhancement of visibility by exploiting uh, active light fields. It is about using photons, which are particles of light, to extract information which our current imagers discard. Our eyes and our current imagers, based on architecture of our eyes, are actually built to record intensity of light. And in that process, they lose most of the information that light carries. Reveal is about untapping and unlocking that huge reservoir of information and using it to accomplish some very interesting and very novel applications. Some of these astounding applications may be changing rough walls into mirrors and being able to see behind objects, looking at the objects that are invisible to the camera, or even looking at the back of objects and people. Uh, another application could be uh, to look into caves and occluded spaces and also to determine materials that objects are made of even if we can't see the objects themselves. So this would be something completely new, uh, a new way of exploiting light that will give us some capabilities that never existed before. The thing I find most astonishing about light is that we are bathed in light from radio waves to cosmic rays. And yet, we as humans can only sense a tiny fraction of that spectrum. So we're using technology to expand our senses to allow us to interact with regions of the spectrum that were previously unexplored. The super high frequencies that you can get from a terahertz device allow you to build communication systems with unimaginably high data rates. Imagine standing next to a, a movie kiosk and downloading an entire movie in a matter of a few seconds. 
the short wavelengths that you get in the terahertz region give radar and imaging devices much higher resolution. And for medical applications, you get nearly the same resolution you can get with x-rays, but it's a non-ionizing radiation, so it's much safer for humans. But as you get into the terahertz region, you encounter this exotic and fantastic valley where we don't have any capabilities, and that's where DARPA stepped in with the terahertz electronics program. What's exciting about light right now is that we're learning how to manipulate light on the scale of light itself. And what I mean by that is historically we've manipulated light with things like glass lenses and fiber optics and even paint on the wall is manipulating light. But what we're learning how to do right now is build machines on the scale of light itself. So imagine these machines that are smaller than a human hair, smaller than a human cell, and we're able to do things that we've never been able to do with light. The DARPA Atoms to Product program is actually developing the processes and the tools that will enable us to build these tiny machines and distribute these machines over large surface areas. And what you could think of uh, achieving with this sort of technology is something similar to the radar evading stealth that DARPA developed in the 70s. Uh, only in this case, that, that camouflage or that uh, deception would be more in the visual range than in the, in the radar range.